take it away. Thank you, Roy. So uh, I'm Roy Lay, industrial engineering. So the candidates should not take any offense after being directed by a room master. Shouldn't be any offense. So we have a general election coming up on November 4th. Uh, a lot of things of local interest. Uh, like last week we had the school board candidates. And if you didn't see that, uh, Cynthia has told me that, uh, that since KMVT is uh, videotaping, it was up on YouTube. So I guess if you go to YouTube, you'll find Link in the rotator. So you can all catch up, or maybe you weren't listening to everything, and you can see, hear what they said. Uh, in addition to the school board, the high school is having an election, and uh, the city of Los Altos is having an election. Los Altos is not, not having an election because their citizens are just in love with the present council people. <laughs> Uh, today we're yeah. at... <laughs> it took him a long time to respond. <laughs> you are getting fine. Uh, you know, we usually have a hundred dollar limit, but I think it just went over the <laughs> uh, Some of them are, of course, what, what downtown zoning, including height and setback <clears throat> and uh, land use. Uh, the 18 acres at the Civic Center. Uh, parking, of course, is a big issue. Engagement of the citizens is a big issue. And all these have been on the docket and they're, they're still in process. So. All these, will, all these decisions will very much affect the future of the city. So all five of these candidates, because a couple of them were here that aren't Rotarians last time, have seen the process. Uh, but they're repeated for Rotarians that sometimes have short memories. <laughs> you do not applaud until the very end, and, uh, and I'll tell you when. Uh, each, each speaker will speak for five minutes. Valerie is operating what used to be the city uh, time box, and you'll see a green light when you're talking, a yellow light when you have 30 seconds, and a, and a red light. I hope you actually you don't see the red light because I hope you'll stop just a few seconds in front of that. So as usual, we pick the order of speaking. That's not the order. Uh, the order was the, uh, the selection was made by the usual playing cards that the uh, candidates drew. Uh, since I will tell you nothing about the candidates, they've all been told they should tell you everything that they want you to know about them. I think most of them brought brochures that are out on the table in the front. Uh, if there's any time permitting, uh, we'll ask a few uh, well-chosen questions. Actually, I don't anticipate that time, but we never know. So the first speaker is Jean Mordeaux. Uh, I picked the ace, but you didn't tell me if it was ace high or ace low. Um, but I guess I'll start this way. I, I can sit back and relax and enjoy the rest of the presentations. So, um, and by the way, uh, Kendra, I wore this today to get your vote, and then I realized you don't live in town and you can't vote for me. <laughs> anyway, so I'm John Bordeaux. I'm running for Losato City Council. Um, Barbara and I have lived in this community for about almost 14 years. I've been educated in France in engineering and um, got an MBA from Stanford and all my career was in the States. I worked mostly for large companies as chief financial officer, although I had also a job as general manager for international. So uh, we retired in Los Altos Hills. Um, where I served on the council for 10 years, uh, and before that in the planning commission for a couple of years, um, for eight years on the council, sorry, and two years on the planning commission. Um, we, Barbara and I, um, essentially, Barbara was a school teacher for 27 years, and by the way, our daughter now teaches elementary school as well, and I was announced to everybody, I'm running on Barbara's popularity, 
um, you know, definitely riding her coattails. Uh, we have been very involved in the community uh, in Los Altos um, for the whole time that we lived in Syria. Uh, we have, um, both of us have served on, on, on non-profit boards, um, CSA, um, uh, the Red Cross, Los Altos uh, Stage Company, uh, Los Altos Community Foundation, CHAC, and we've, we've done numerous fundraisers and um, so we have been, uh, we are very honored to have been recognized in 2009 by the Town Crier uh, jointly as um, Los Saltans of the Year and we've been um, recognized last year by the Community Services Agency. We always, even when we, looked, we lived in Los Altos Hills, we always considered Los Altos our downtown and the center of all our activities. So. When we decided to uh, downsize, uh, it's natural that we decided to move to the village, and um, we are very excited uh, that we're doing that. So we love Los Altos as it is, and we want to keep it the way it is, but just make it better. Um, the, um, Los Altos, as, as you probably have noticed, working around town, uh, is undergoing dramatic change. There are a lot of um, young people, uh, young couple moving in with young children. That's why the population, the school population is, is going up. And uh, so the composition of the city is changing. And also seniors downsizing, moving into condos. So there's been a lot of condo building, which means that we are a little more, um, a little more dense in town. And uh, because essentially people are Los Altos is a very attractive place to live. But this, uh, these changes have put a lot of pressure on our city leaders. And um, uh, we have, as was mentioned, several problems to, uh, to face in the next few years. So first, um, I think uh, we need a specific plan for, and thoughtful plan for downtown, which is grounded on the, the community input so that we have a better consensus of what it is we want Los Altos to look like five years, 10 years, 20 years from now. Um, so we, we, we want to keep the charm and character of Los Altos, but allow it to grow to meet our future needs. Second thing we need is an affordable community center, uh, which is in sync with our downtown and provides the needed sports, educational, recreational resources to residents, especially for the youth and for the seniors. And thirdly, and of growing importance, we need more parking. We need more and easier parking for people to take advantage of a wonderful downtown. The number one goal for parking should be Los Altans' feet on the street. We want to get the residents to come more often, to have more um, uh, business downtown. So those changes won't happen by themselves. We need leadership. I have 10 years of experience in city government and many years in senior financial management. I know how to get things done and done right. I know how to work with the community, the city staff, and other agency with neighboring cities. Thank you very much. So I'm Mary Crock now, and I'm running for city council because I love Los Altos, and I believe I have a contribution to make. I've worked here since 1972, and I've lived here since 1981. I was born in San Francisco and moved down the peninsula to San Mateo when I was two. Went to St. Matthew's Elementary School and Notre Dame High School in Belmont, after which I went to the novitiate in, of Notre Dame in Saratoga, and then to USF in San Francisco. I was married in 1968, had a daughter in 1970. She has one child who's eight. My mom was a real estate broker before my birth, as I have been since 1972. I love the business and have been on my own since 1991. I joined Rotary in 1987. It was the year that the Supreme Court insisted that service clubs allow women. I was invited to each of them. Dennis Young invited me here. And uh, Super Superintendent of Schools Marge Gratchett and I became the second women in the club on the same day in December of 1987. I joined Rotary because I was inspired by Polio Plus and the idea 
that an organization could dream of eradicating a disease worldwide. Imagine. My plan for council service is to take a lesson that I have learned from each position I've held and make that my contribution to the city. Since joining Rotary, I have served as president of Los Altos Board of Realtors and Regional MLS, where I first learned the importance of the interaction between paid staff and volunteer boards. I served as president of the Chamber of Commerce, where I learned to understand the unique character and function of our seven business districts and to understand the needs of business owners and professionals in our community. I served with Dick Hasenflug as co-chair and Gene Newton as PR wizard of the very first local school parcel tax, which was called CLASS, Keep Los Altos Schools Strong. That's where I learned that when educated about the real needs and goal, the goals of a bond measure, all, constituents groups, all constituent groups can be engaged in a solution. I served as chair of the Community Foundation, and I served on its board for 20 years. There I learned of the diversity, depth, and breadth of philanthropy and creativity of our, of our community. I learned the principles of that great leader, John Gardner, and I learned about building community. I served as president of this Rotary Club, and I learned the extent of service required for that and the joys that club fellowship can bring. My theme was Imagine, and one of my primary goals was to have this group sing a song that was written after my birth. I don't think I accomplished that goal. <laughs> I've saved the best of those services for the last. Uh, I served as the original co-chair of the Rotary AIDS Project and had the most amazing experience of my life. It was a magical time. I learned the meaning of Margaret Mead's quote, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever does. The talent that emerged in that project was beyond anybody's imagination. Please vote for me and then join me in changing Los Altos for the better. Contribute your talents in a positive way so that we can work together, communicate with one another better, plan construction better, use our commissions and volunteers better, and support our schools in a better way. Please join me and imagine what we can do together. Thank you. We just don't follow directions very well in this club. <laughs> it's always a challenge. The next speaker, Kara, Karen Berner. Hello, my name is Karen Berner, and I'm running for Los Altos City Council. I'd like to start off with a quote from one of my favorite speakers, Abraham Lincoln. He said, I'm a firm believer in the people. If given the truth, they can be depended upon to meet any national crisis. The great point is to bring them the real facts and beer. No, today I didn't bring any beer. Instead, I'd like to share some facts with you all. We're fortunate to have five opportunities before us today. First, we have this wonderful opportunity to forge a revitalized downtown. We can decide what we want and need going forward with the city redevelopment. The words vibrant and diverse often crop up in conversation and it behooves us to define these terms in relation to what we envision our family-friendly city to look like in five, 10, and 40 years. Our second opportunity is to create a mosaic of our city's overall growth plans. I believe this opportunity is to look at our city's approach to growth from a holistic perspective, incorporating current and pr proposed development with projected parking needs, considering the new school commute along with increased crosstown traffic flow, and studying ways to improve or alter our roads, pedestrian, and bicycle paths. Our responsibility lies in ensuring the city continues to adapt to keep pace with its own development. Our third opportunity is to heal divisions in our educational community and build ongoing positive relationships. This particular opportunity arises from the actions of misunderstanding. Let's look ahead at solutions and consider the measure and bond. And at the same time, let's look at how we can develop ongoing working relationships with other cities and school boards. As growth continues to ebb and flow over the coming decades, this will benefit all parties by enabling us to withstand fluctuating enrollment and benefit our community now and for many years to come. Fourth is the opportunity to create a healthier and improved environment for our children and their children. I came to Los Altos because it offers families the ideal blend of development, green spaces, and community services. As the city grows and ages, we should maintain balance among these three 
and also work toward developing each of these in a healthy way. Fifth, we have an opportunity to convert the Hillview Center into a bustling area that meets the needs of our elderly, young, and in between. It's a positive project for our city, and I engage neighbors in discussions to ensure our city's civic needs will be met, whether discussing environmental impact, placement of a pool, cost projections, it's clear the Civic Center will have a significant impact on the next generation of Los Altons. So you must be wondering why I believe I'd be a good candidate. Like most of you, I come from a hardworking background. I've always been driven to create a better life for myself and my community. During college, I worked multiple jobs, internships, and pro bono work. This passion and drive continued throughout my career until I had heart failure at the age of 35 while delivering my twins. At this point, I worked my recovery, raised my children, and started a freelance company from home while my husband continued with his startup company. We were never bored. I considered myself the point person for my family. While doing so, I found that my community had unmet needs and cheerfully stepped in to fill each role where I thought I could make a difference. When I decided to be scout leader for my kids entering kindergarten, 25 children signed up. One challenge often becomes another, and I embrace it. When I served as PTU president in the Cupertino Union School District, none of our teachers had laptops, nor did the school have funding for technology such as this. Working with the principal and the board, I determined that we could reallocate PTA funds to bring our teachers into the 21st century. Over the past 25 years of work and volunteer positions, I've shown that I am a tenacious problem solver, create coalitions, and I'm dedicated to people and causes. I'm honest, embrace hard work, and I always deliver what I promise. I love Los Altos. I strive to live so you would be proud of having me represent you on the Los Altos City Council. I humbly ask for your vote. The fourth, fourth speaker, Alex Glue. My name is Alex Glue, and I'm running for City Council. Today I'm going to tell you a little about myself personally, about my professional background, my thoughts on Los Altos and politics in a small town, and some of my positions. For more details on positions, you can go to uh, my website, alexglue.com. We've already had hundreds of visitors, and you can get a little more detail. Feel free to post blogs, leave comments, um, and if you'd like them anonymous, we can make sure they stay that way also. Um, I researched the Rotary Club a little bit before I came today, and I decided that I liked the uh, Declaration of Rotarians in Business and Profession. I think it's a very admirable statement that you could probably insert into any business professional code in the country. I find that I probably, and most good professionals, should be following those. Uh, personally, I was born in San Francisco, grew up in Pacifica, went to high school in San Francisco. I uh, then attended UC Berkeley, where I received a BS and MS in mechanical engineering. Found a sleepy little company in the Silicon Valley called Applied Materials, and I put in a decade there. It grew by a factor of 40. It was a good time to be there. At that point, I left and returned to Stanford. I received a master's and a PhD in material science. Studied uh, diamond coatings and things like that. Also licensed in engineering in the state of California. I certainly value education and hard work. I will do what I can to um, you know, support education in Los Altos. It's very important to me. Uh, I moved to Los Altos in 1997 with my beautiful wife, Martha. Uh, the first thing I did when we got married, we moved here a couple months after being married, was we got a golden retriever puppy and bought a house together. That pretty much locked down the marriage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my personal motto in business is to be courteous and professional at all times. I think that's especially important in an environment like this. Um, I work largely with uh, large high-tech companies and industrial companies, companies ranging from Caterpillar and Nissan to agencies of the federal government and startups. I testify frequently as an expert. I've testified in federal court probably half a dozen times, the International Trade Commission in Washington, international arbitrations, High Court of Taiwan, and various and sundry places. I run an engineering company in Mountain View. I have empathy for business. I own the building. I remodeled it. I dealt with the planning commission in Mountain View. I know what businesses go through. Uh, my family had retail businesses going up. Um, I'm not in conflict in Los Altos. I don't have property downtown. I'm not planning on buying property downtown. Uh, with regards to leadership and the council, many have asked me, does the council need to be more transparent? I think of it differently. The Berkeley motto is 
fiat lux, let there be light. Basically, the town council needs to be more like a light bulb. They need to broadcast outward to maximize community engagement, community understanding. A lot of what I do as an expert witness is I take very complex situations, I study them for months and years, and then I convince 12 people in a box, a jury who'd rather not be there, why this plasma reactor is different than this plasma reactor. So it, it's a very important skill to have to boil down information. Then I never expect anybody to believe me. I expect them to make a decision for themselves. They make the decision for themselves and they feel comfortable making a decision because you've armed them with the information. You've done due diligence, you've done honest thought yourself, and you've tried to create information that, that can lead to action. Um, certainly you meet people, you shake hands, you talk to people, but you have to give people, especially in a sophisticated community like Los Altos, and this is a very sophisticated community, the information to move forward in a concerted way. Um, with regards to city council, um, I think they need to focus on leadership and helping to set direction rely as much as possible on staff. The staff needs all the tools they can and as much training as we can give them. It may be expensive to train staff. It's more expensive not to train them and have them stay. Um, let's see, regards to downtown. Um, I th think the basic premise is that people move to Los Altos because they like it here. Um, we want to preserve the character. Preserving character doesn't mean preserving buildings. Buildings are old, buildings need to be changed. I think we have a unique opportunity now with 18 acres at the Civic Center and the Hillview uh, Community Center, which needs to be remodeled and should, to provide some greater synergy between downtown and, and the uh, Civic Center. We need to open the box a little bit on thinking, think about an underpass to get people back and forth more safely. I think we're all scared to death of crossing San Antonio. Um, and uh, parking structure and more parking is a great thing. Um, Planning is often a contentious issue. We need to keep that simple. I'm a licensed engineer. I know how it goes. Thank you. You can vote twice. Please vote for me twice. Thank you. <laughs> well, what a joy to be here today. I think it's uh, wonderful to have a chance to hear from all the candidates. And don't worry, after I speak at some point, you can clap. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jared Fishpaw. I'm a 27-year resident of Los Altos. I brought my parents with me today, and I also brought my support community. I've worked in the downtown at the Los Altos Village Association for seven years. I worked there during high school and, and college. I attended UC Santa Cruz over on the other side of the hill, which I will uh, bring some attention to that it is not Stanford. <laughs> I started on the city council in 2010. At that time, one of the first meetings that I attended was on a black, uh, block traffic study. Uh, the block school area has a wonderful um, commuter issue with, with the amount of traffic there, and we had uh, uh, two hours of public comment at one of my first city council meetings. I will say that it was a trial by fire to understand that sometimes people don't always agree in this community, but that as a city council, we still need to provide direction and clarity to our residents as to why we made the decisions that we made. I, I think that it's uh, wonderful. Mary mentioned class, keep Los Altos schools strong. Nowadays, we have other organized groups that choose different names like SLAP. Save Los Altos Parks. I think the, uh, the tone in town is, is one of uh, Los Altos' city council being recognized right now for the, the steps that we've taken towards an open government. We had a beautiful walk in the downtown on a, a recent Saturday where we were able to bring just about 100 residents through the downtown and walk and see some of the projects that have recently completed. Work that we've done in the community over the last four years includes the downtown intersections that we've changed. Four years ago, we had uh, large concrete seats, referred to as coffins, I suppose, when they were originally um, placed in the downtown. Today, we have planter boxes that many have told me uh, do sometimes obscure their, the view when you're turning. So I, I suppose that with progress, does come times when we need to understand changes that, that we can make on future projects as well. We've renovated the S San Antonio Club. We've made acoustic upgrades in a facility called the Garden House. We've made transportation planning improvements. I don't know if anybody's visited Homestead Road recently, but we did add a new stoplight in town. We're in the double digits now. <laughs> have been for a while, I suppose. But we also have completed traffic street calming master plan. We've completed a bicycle master plan and we are in progress on pedestrian master plan. These are the transportation master planning documents that our community 
needs to follow. These are the documents that outline, out of all the solutions in our toolkit, all the different ways that we can build an intersection, that we can provide a bike access route, which ones are most appropriate for our community. Part of what I hope to do by being re-elected to the city council with your support is to be able to continue forward with those projects. Every, every time we change course as a city, there's a lot of work that we've invested in that we unfortunately have to redo in situations to get to a, a, a scenario that ultimately, either way, we would have been in a better place than where we started. So I, I hope that we're able to move forward on some of these uh, master planning documents. As we go forward over the next four years, my personal priorities are going to include the community center redevelopment. This is something that needs to happen in the next four years. I think parking downtown has been something that uh, we've seen a great uh, growth in support from organizations like the Chamber of Commerce. I think that property owners in our downtown are, are understanding that there are ways that they can partner with the city to effectively provide our community with the parking that we need. We have transportation projects in these master plans that I mentioned. We have a skate park that I believe needs to be built in our town. We have facilities other than Hillview Park and, and the community center that need to be invested in. And I hope that we take into account even our IT needs that we notice um, as, as recently as this Tuesday when our projector at City Hall did not work for our public meeting. I'm an advocate for affordable housing. I live in affordable housing. I could not live in this community if it weren't for affordable housing. I believe that there are people in our community that are dedicated servants, teachers and others that need places to live near our community or in our community. And I think there are regional approaches that we as a county can take to create sub-regions within our county to assign regional housing needs allocations, other approaches that allow us more options. I've held office hours for four years. We've hired a new city manager. I would appreciate your support, your vote. I need your support as we go forward. I would hope that our new city council in December is wonderful. <laughs> Wait a minute, I didn't ask you to clap yet. <laughs> Can I have all five of the uh, council, uh, candidates come up and join me? And when they're all here, then we'll show our appreciation for not only running for the council, but showing up today. Now. Now. for questions. Uh, so I have some carefully selected questions here. And the first one is, what is the role of the city? And we're not going to time you, but I think the school board candidates were really good. They spent about one minute in answering the question. So that's the goal. Hmm? I know, but I may do another question. Hmm. Uh, what is the role of the city in regards to the school districts that serve our residents? And we're going to go in reverse order, so we'll start with Jared. I believe that the school board is a peer organization to the city council. They derive their power directly from the state of California, as does the city council. I believe that there are opportunities that we can partner, that we can provide services at a reduced cost because one agency has a competency over the other like mowing lawns, the city actually does a really good job at that. But I believe as a partner, we can achieve more rather than trying to be directive towards an agency which is a peer to ours. It's a very important agency that we need to coexist with. There are a lot of synergies. There are some minor conflicts. The minor conflicts should not become a major issue. We have duties and responsibilities to each other. We need to provide safe paths to the school, safe environments, easy access. These are issues that are handled by a city, um, the school board has its responsibilities not to create scenarios that the city can't handle. So uh, all in all, I think it needs to be a strong, uh, uh, positive relationship that benefits both and uh, produces results that are both monetarily beneficial, but that are beneficial to the community and to, most importantly, to the students uh, that are largely children of Los Altos. Hi. Um, I think, as I mentioned before, it's important for the 
uh, school boards and the cities uh, to work together with each other and neighboring um, organizations uh, because they all interconnect. There's a synergy that has to happen uh, with the different um, aspects of each part. Um, the, um, for example, uh, City of Los Altos has to worry about the uh, traffic flows, uh, safe pedestrian, safe bicycling in order to get the kids to and from the schools, and there's a lot of other object um, situations where they have to depend upon each other uh, to work together. So thank you. So um, I'm going to list specifics, but I think most importantly, the school district and the and the uh, council need to work together for one common goal, which is to do the best for the students of our uh, district and our town. Um, I think that there's nothing that tires the citizenry more than hearing that something can't be done because one bureaucracy can't get along with the other bureaucracy, and these are two bureaucracies. So I think that it's very important that we do whatever we can to get, let the walls drop down and let ourselves get together and come together for a common solution. Okay, along the same lines, I think um, um, each, the, the city council and the school um, a board have um, different, um, um, different responsibilities, but their interests overlap by about 90 or 95 percent, essentially, because school does well, the, uh, the city does well, uh, the values go up, value property value goes up. So I would welcome a better relationship uh, between the district and the city council than has been the case recently. So we'll try another question. So the, if you look at a map of the city of Los Altos. Oh, I know. <laughs> Anyhow, if you look at the map of the city of Los Altos. I'm sorry. I don't like to say no to Roy. But we are short on time. So thank you, everyone, for being here today and giving us your perspective. I'm sitting here thinking how thankful I am that I don't have to run for the office that I'm in right now. Because <laughs> luckily, I was just granted the opportunity to meet with you each week. Um, and I do want to point out that our theme this year, Light Up Rotary, um, a professor, Felix Adler, once said, the hero is one who kindles a great light in the world, who sets up blazing torches in the dark streets of life for men to see by. And this really hit home with me today when I was thinking about 9-11. So I'd like you all to take this week to light up Rotary in the world around you. And thank you. This meeting's adjourned. <laughs>